What up, bitches? Welcome back to the Pick It and Flick It podcast, Halloween Extravaganza 3. I'm Luke. I'm Natasha. I'm Vox. <laughs> oh, and, and there it is. We're back. The and show that we... only uses Luke's face as Let, advertisement. Listen, listen, sex sells. That's all I can say. And in that case, uh, bringing me back from, from the dead <laughs> via dog piss to talk about one of my favorite franchises, that being A Nightmare on Elm Street. And more, ooh, good one. And more specifically, the fourth film, a.k.a. The Dream Midster. Because it's, you see what I did there? Yeah. Okay. I get it. Go from there. You're really jumping really far in. I was going to do like a whole welcome back. It's been yeah. six episodes. What do we need to you... welcome back for? Because it's literally been six episodes. Listen. Or, I'm sorry, six whole days because it's in October. We're in October right It is. Now. It's definitely not September 21st at uh, 6.45 p.m. <laughs> Do you, you remember? Oh. Oh. Whoa. Oh, September. Holy shit. <laughs> Earth, wind, and fire via dog piss. And it's the last day of uh, summer, if we're actually going to say that it's the 21st of it's, September. It's almost officially spooky season. Tomorrow is the first day of fall, and we're releasing this on the 22nd of October. Mm, so that's nice. Yep, we're really getting there, but... Anyways. Listen, you can't watch a movie and podcast about it every single day in October. You got to go to haunted houses. That's true. Or, or like we Disney. do. Yeah, go to Disney and <laughs> go to Hollywood Horror Nights and that has a Halloween house this year of Michael Myers. Yeah, of okay, course. okay. Of course. I can dig it. Uh by this point when this releases, Halloween Ends will have come out, so Oh, okay. I'll either be mildly impressed or extremely disappointed or and somewhere the, the maybe only both. place that you can find out true, pure Luke, unadulterated, unedited conversation is pick it is and here. flick it. <laughs> AKA we don't edit shit. Other than my highly edited and overly produced YouTube.com slash confused reviews. Of course, where you have already dropped the banger of the year. Freddy. Hopefully, by this point, a few Fred- more. <laughs> oh, okay. Hopefully. Okay. Freddy versus Jason, which is a great segue it, it was and a tie great in video. to uh, what we watched today. Which So, we never preface this. Some of the picks that we have made, um, actually, all of the picks that we made, were Tosh and I. Yes. And Luke went through the list and was like, I'll be on this one, I'll mm-hmm. be on this one, I'll mm-hmm. be on this one. And then he got really busy again, and he hasn't been able to join us for as many as we wanted to. Sure, sure. So we saved all of the ones that Luke wanted to be on, with the exception of the ones that were prior to this. Sure. Till right now. So here we are with Tasha's pick, Dream... Dream Master. Mess. And... Mester. <laughs> we got two name jokes already off the off the uh, rip there. And here we are. So but yeah, back. you you forgot that welcome we back, did... Buddy. Uh, Dream Warriors last time because no, you said why are we doing the fourth one <laughs> I didn't forget <laughs> yes you did no I didn't forget that we did a Nightmare on Elm Street movie last year you're already I, slurring are I you, forgot are you which ones that under we the influence did. well I've only had one beer so not really but <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, an aperitif for you yeah it's just uh, it's a sip that's all of one beer is. but regardless what a fucking <clears throat> masterpiece this movie I mean, was. okay, so I've been I've been doing a little updated research because if you somehow more than likely missed my four year old confused reviews episode on this, which fun fact was the first one where Freddie appears and doesn't look like dog shit, so oh that's nice. But uh, like you're Freddy or yeah Freddy yeah in yeah the, movie. the Freddy in the confused reviews extended cinematic universe. Oh oh okay. Uh, there's deep extensive the CRU lore, as we as we as we, we know. labeled it yeah. Um okay. but yeah so I've been I've been doing a little updated research because I really do like Elm Street. You you every time we do one of these there's a certain like breaking point for Vox where he goes <laughs> why do people like these really that's that's that, that's really what it is. he's like these kind of are ass they're so and, bad man and and I'll agree to an extent but I do love Freddy Freddy's my favorite icon mine too uh, I've always said Halloween's my favorite horror movie Jason has the coolest series uh and and Freddy's my favorite uh like icon but the this movies one definitely are not scary sure it, the real question was <laughs> were these movies scary? Like this came out in what nine or eighty? Well, eighty eight, and that's what I was okay. getting to. This okay. was a rush job. This just go go go. Nineteen eighty seven was the third one. Oh, so okay, they got they got to work quickly on this one. Well, it's not. We any, had a we had a Hellraiser. So, oof. <laughs> we which by this point the the Hellraiser reboot will have come out. Um, so <laughs> there's a lot happening. September. There's a lot happening, and uh, it's really interesting year to be a slasher fan. Really, um, but Isn't every year. 
No. I feel like every year in the past like few We've years. We've gotten Leatherface, Chucky, Hellraiser, and Michael Myers all this year. Yeah, but what did we get last year? COVID? No, last year was 2021. <laughs> that was two years ago. Um, but yeah, so this movie, the, the poster came out before the script was done, and a lot of this movie was kind of done... Oh, on wow. the fly, like uh, they were just kind of shooting it, and we're like, hopefully, we can scrounge this together. Does it look good? I don't know. We'll find out in editing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, this movie had a lot of uh, let's get it done because uh, strike while the iron's hot, if you will. Oh sure. Um, and and this movie is the highest grossing of the saga, which no. is interesting. No. Yeah, look it up. Aside from the remake in Freddy vs. Jason, which obviously inflation well, no, yeah, and yeah. Freddy... But yeah, this is the highest grossing solo Freddy movie. Kind of a bummer, because I think the last one should have been, but that one's made a fuck ton of money, well, and that's why this one we had to... And, and the Dream Child came out a year from now, okay. in 89. Yeah, so they, sure. were, they were pumping these out. Well, my question is, is what did this movie have in... Like, what competition did it have when it was released in theaters? I'm glad you asked because the opening weekend it was number one, but we also had Young Guns and Die Hard. Ooh, so that's some yeah. I don't know I, about Young Guns, but Die Hard was probably a, this. Obviously, wasn't Die Hard's opening weekend, but still, that's a great trilogy of films to come out in that same little little time period. There, wow. I don't know what Young Gun is. I'm gonna be honest and say I'm very disappointed in that phrase there, but I watched it with my dad like. Probably around the same time that I watched Die Hard with my dad. What what a what a and, time for cinema. I've never even seen Die Hard. That's either. oh my goodness. Well, so listen, I'm not even a big Die Hard fan. Like the whole <laughs> argument, and we could go on for days about the you know it's the best Christmas movie or whatever, which it is. Um, it's not that good of a movie in my opinion. Uh, however, however, I will say that for what it is, it's definitely a classic. So to have it as to have this movie have that as. Uh, competition it is a and high still, bar. still be highest and still be grossing. the yeah and still be the highest grossing is well like I was telling you while we were watching it uh, I was I was rewatching the segment of Never Sleep Again which is the fucking six hour Elm Street documentary very good oh that came out um, on uh, it was on Netflix for a while wasn't it for a long time yeah, yeah. it came out in like 2010 yeah I, I think, remember that because it talks about the remake so it had to have been pretty soon after that but um. First of all, Rennie Harlan is the guy who directed this movie. He's he's a Finnish man, and, and you can tell a lot of his kind of, I don't even want to say foreign aesthetic, but you can tell a lot in the shots and how this movie's put together. I pointed this out earlier. Sure. Everyone talks with so much teeth in the, this There's movie. a lot of weird acting, it's which like, I didn't notice before. Oh, my God. And it's I'm very so strange. Do you lie? Like, they don't, like, their lips can't touch. They were all wearing dentures, so that, they were terrible. having a hard time. Um, but this movie was, was quite a rush job. Rennie Harlan, uh, got the job cause he, he just kept going to the new line cinema office and being like, Hey, Bob Shea, can I, can I do this movie? And, and that, and, <laughs> cause they wanted cheap, young and won't complain directors. And full of cum. I mean, all right, yes, great. yes, definitely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but Robert England called this movie, the MTV nightmare on Elm street. And I, I definitely would agree with that. What's the one where he turns into a comic book? That's the next one. Okay. That's he, super Freddy. And he, Oh yeah. And he doesn't think that that one was the MTV. Well, because this one is, is the official turning point for me and, and well for the series where one was straight horror, little bit of jokes, but very, very seldom. It, it was all like it was, he was yeah. enjoying it. And that was the joke. Two was a movie, and the third one was a nice balance of both, and that's why it's everyone's favorite. It's the best one. Changed my mind. And uh, this is the point where pretty much all the seriousness is thrown out the window, oh. and, and, and it's, it's, I mean, it's never very, coming back. It's very clear. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, this very like, clear. like I said, Robert England gets top billing. Robert England in A Nightmare on Elm Street 4. There's, there's no more secret. He's the face of this baby. You see him put on them sunglasses. There's no turning back. <laughs> I love that because, uh, you know, I'm a hardcore, I don't know if you know this, I'm a hardcore Confused Review fan. and um, Who isn't? That was a, like... It's a it, great shot. It's an, it's an image that you yeah. used in your intro for mm. a little while. Mm. And I was always like, I thought it was a meme. You would think. I thought it was. I thought Cause, it was cause it's you. A GIF. It's, yeah. it's a very common GIF. Like if you search on like Facebook or Twitter, like in the GIF part, <laughs> Freddy Krueger, chances are him thrown on the shades are there. It's so funny. I mean, it's just so funny. Because um, I think Rennie had him do that because it was like uh, I think he said it was like to be like the Tom Cruise of slasher oh, okay. people, yeah. which 
Mm-hmm. One of the few Top things, Gun, that makes sense. Yeah. The one, one of the few things in this movie, well, actually, I'll, I'll, with the exception of the first one, in this franchise is like the goofy things that Freddy can turn into mm-hmm. in order to correlate with what the people are dreaming about, right? So in this movie, there was the beach scene, which is where we get the infamous sunglasses, but the Freddy shark. Freddy shark. I mean, the well, it, you know, the shark fin, at least. And did you notice pretty cool. the sun, uh, the sand castle, the sun castle, the sand castle was Freddy's house? Yes, and I like ex- that. And I like that it exploded, and he everything. Just like, he's tons like, hey, of yeah, things are exploding. Right out of it. Yeah, tons of explosions in this movie. You would uh, think it's a Michael Bay film. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not too far off because Michael Bay films are not only terribly acted. There's just a shitload of explosions. The only difference is the billion dollar uh, budget that Michael Bay usually has compared to this movie, because you could tell. As we know, they ran out. They ran out of money because uh, uh, Rick's. Uh, Elevator, if you will, um, was <laughs> Which supposed is to the worst special effect in the movie. It's no. the worst. Yes, it is. No. What's worse than the elevator? How is that a bad special effect? He though? was like in in order to replicate the G's he was getting from going down so oh, fast. Oh, look at Science Man over he was here. Holding, <laughs> he was just holding himself up on the bars and making a chilly fresh. Like the rest of the stuff, we I, we got reverse melting. Like putting back together, born again, resurrected Freddy like, via dog piss, via <laughs> flaming dog piss. Like that's amazing. There was the 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 first really cool one is the slashes through the locker where mm-hmm. you can see kind of the rust on the other side. There were so many good special effects. The elevator was dog. And, and well, well, not the elevator was cool. It was supposed to lead into like a, a much larger effect where the where the bottom comes out and and he's like flying through space or whatever the storyboard said, but then nope. they ran out of money, so they were like, let's drape up uh, uh, one of these sets here with some uh uh Japanese-looking karate stuff and and he can fight invisible Freddy, which is <laughs> Poor and guy. So did they pay they obviously had those voiceovers from England mm-hmm. uh, a because they couldn't they probably afford went to bring to his house back. with a fucking tape recorder and were like here just say a few goofs here oh you're telling me they didn't have just yeah, some or they had, stashed in their little front pen well pocket. i mean they are they are karate centric so i'll say they they might have brought him in they probably when they did adr he probably came yeah in he could and, they could have done anything but if they ran out of money i would have only imagined that he wouldn't have done any voiceovers for less than uh, well because he was saying in the interviews of this one where like he started and for like a week he like wasn't even that enthused with the project he was like oh this is probably gonna be bad well how could oh, you no. you've done four movies already the first of which first two were you know at least a serious aspect now you got fucking Dream Warriors and Dream. Uh, Listen, Dream, Dream Master Warriors is a Dream masterpiece, Scott. so I don't even want to hear it. I gave, if I'm recalling correctly, I gave Dream Dream Warriors a very uh, optimistic and fair rating. This one I can't say that I'll do the same with, and I can't remember even. I do remember vaguely Dream Child, and I know we're not there yet. Yeah, but, that's a weird one. That's um, when things got really off the rails. And Alice comes back for that one, so we'll we'll be seeing more of Lisa Wilcox. Oh, really? Yeah. So, and they recast her? Or, no, or, they did not. I'm sorry. They, we'll, we'll get into that, though. Well, speaking of recasting. Yes. So uh, Patricia Arquette, who we now know is a big-time actress, uh, got her start, like many an actress or actor in Hollywood, with a low-budget, shitty slasher movie, uh, Kevin Bacon and the like. Um, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp, sure. McConaughey. Sure. Renee Zellweger in the same film. And uh, so she was in the first one, and Chuck Russell, who I think is a dynamite director and seeming piece of shit, um, he did The Mask and a few other things, but uh, he directed Dream Warriors, and apparently he was not very nice to Patricia Arquette, um, Mm. specifically. Jesus. What are you going to do? I mean, and and so by the time this one came around, there's... Several different things of why she didn't come back. Um, she was pregnant. She didn't want to do it. She didn't get enough money. She, uh, there's several. Who the fuck knows? Right, I, right. I can't get her on the horn to ask. But um, <laughs> if we could, we'd be a little bit more famous. I mean, I would just like to talk to her about. That's it. You know, tell me about a 35 year old slasher movie. But <laughs> so even though she, even though he wasn't directing this movie, she still didn't. Want yeah, to I think she was just kind of. It kind of soiled the. Uh, she was in the first three. No. She was in the first two. You're thinking of Heather Langenkamp, who's Nancy, and she was in one and three. Okay, I'm sorry. It's okay. I forgive you, but they won't. (laughs) If they are here, thank you so much for berating me and giving me your view. 
continue in the comments in the comment that that Please. be yeah. preferred give me a give me a down vote too because those are apparently uh according to youtube's algorithm as of today it, it doesn't matter if you get upvoted or downvoted they'll it's the same s- they'll still same put push. your fucking video out on so it. give us a f- big fat thumbs down yeah all the times i've said that sarcastically maybe it was doing something there you go anyway uh, sorry <laughs> sidetrack but um in, in that case kirsten as because they don't really say Kristen in this kirsten, one it's yeah, kind of kirsten, kirsten but uh, she was recast as Tuesday Night, and and I swear that's the real name. We we saw it I in the can't credits. I none of them believed me. <laughs> Listen, um, I would totally, and I'm not even fucking with you. If Tasha and I decided to have a kid, and it was a girl, okay, I would be totally fine with Name Your Wednesday. Yeah, me too. I would be but. totally fine because my oh! last name is Adams. For it those, took who, me a, it took me a moment. Yeah, for those who don't know, my last name is Adams, so I would be really, really fine with naming her Wednesday. I think it would be amazing. Yeah. So Tuesday doesn't bother me. As someone whose I name think is Tuesday night is very like, and it's not night like N night. No, it's, it's like it's, night it's shining armor. Yeah. armor. Yeah. Uh, but I uh, to to move along with that, as someone whose name is Luke, don't fucking do that. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, I am your father. Use the force. Ha ha. You're so fucking clever. <laughs> There's not very many, like, Adams. I guess they could snap at her, but. Yeah, but we have one D, not two. So it doesn't even yeah. work. She could just be a little fucking. I only have one D. She, oh. Yeah, uh, she could just be a little shit. Oh, fuck. Now we got to have a kid. <laughs> no. Are you carrying it? No. Okay. I would if you wanted me to. Anyway, so... Junior? Arnold Schwarzenegger, anyone? Sure, sure. Right. Uh, classic. Yeah. Right up there with Terminator. No. <laughs> <laughs> that and the sixth day. Those are his three best. Kindergarten cop. His son's on Dancing with the Stars. Predator? Which one? The in-shape one or... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> or the round one? The, yeah, the, or the, the round round is still a shape. So... This is what happens when Luke isn't on episodes for... Um, extended periods of time, you know. I miss out on the extensive Arnold lore. I well, guess. not even that. It's just we we start cracking jokes on the mic, and then we were all of a sudden at I, twenty. I'm not minutes, caught so. in on the uh, on on the laughs here. It's crazy. Yeah, Vox and I don't really steer off. We're path. very we're very straight on the books. <laughs> it's, it's probably a little boring to be honest with and, you. And, but and that I haven't listened to them, so because well, they're not. I mean, what they're out right now? Yeah, they're out now. I haven't even listened to all of them. Oh, rude! Are you even a fan? No. No, he's just a co-host. I prefer an AC. So the issue that I have with this movie is that the entire movie until probably like the last quarter seemed like it was dubbed. Like the lines (laughs) were so fucking bad in the original acting that they had to go over them. And I'm not kidding you. Like we, you and I both at one point were watching voices in in accordance to the lips moving. It looked like like they weren't moving. Oh my God. Like something was going on and and I've never noticed that before. I mean, I've done a fucking video where I had to watch it several times. We are watching like a DVD of a thrift store purchase or whatever it was. Second and Charles probably. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it could, it could just be the fact that this DVD is old as dirt and we're watching it, but. There were some issues. I don't think so. There was some fucking issues. I'll have like, to look because I, I have uh, the HD fuckery on, on... 4K? Probably. Okay. It's well, in it's the a- edit right now it- on uh, for the Freddy vs. Jason video that everyone should watch. Oh, there you go. So I'll take a peek. Well, if it's not 4K, I don't want to talk about it. We can't, we can't coordinate dubs with lit movement if it's not 4K. Well, and didn't, not possible. wasn't there one point where the... Subtitle was different than what he actually said. Yeah, yeah. but that's very common. That's, that's super common. Oh, that's that's someone typed out the script from a piece of paper that they saw, and then they t- they used a different you know shot that they recorded, and the, the actor took a little bit of liberty. And like I said, they were kind of shooting this on the fly, so I'm sure the script oh, sure. was because I think uh, Rick and Alice were supposed to be twins originally, or some. What? It doesn't matter. I want to talk about how insignificant this fucking dad is in this movie. They make him look like the biggest pile of shit. They keep throwing him in all of these scenes. He's got a fucking liquor bottle, and then all of a sudden he just disappears. Well, right. the mom, Nancy's mom in, in Elm Street, was also a very big Elky, so I'm, I'm assuming that was just a, a kind of carryover. Because everything in the 80s was terrible. You just if you weren't Except drinking, for the movies. If you weren't just drinking booze to get over the fact that your job sucks, your kids are pain I'm, in the ass, I'm gonna, the dog's a pile of shit, <laughs> your wife's dead, you hate your life. I want to play devil's advocate here and say I don't think that was the drug of choice in the 80s. No, hell no. But it's just it's so funny to me that there was just this like heavy implement of a 
drunk dad and a dead mom. And that was the issues with the kids. What is this, a Disney movie? Yeah, right. And then they just drop him. Well, because she becomes him. badass and tells him, I'm going out, shit. dad. She went from you can't stop the me. smelly, greasy band geek to kind of like, hey, what's up, girl? Yeah, well, that was her, the, that's, she washed her hair. Put yeah, her hair, you know, put she her got hair that in a ponytail. Put a little bit of fucking leather jacket on. I was like, God damn! The powers of your dead friends do that. I'm okay with that. I assume. Uh, you mentioned this while we were watching, but I'm going to piggyback off of it. Is that the fact that um, every movie they introduce some small little gimmick with the dream. with the dream stuff? Because that's the thing. Like you would think they would kind of use the dream aspect a lot more than they do, really. Yeah, sure. Um, and and. Honestly, there's a lot of wasted potential with Freddy Krueger. The more the time as time goes on, and the more you watch these movies, you're not wrong. Yeah, and, I agree and, with you. 100%. And and that's something like we were just talking about not ten minutes ago, where like this year alone, we've seen just about every big horror icon come back. Scream, fuck, that came out this year too. Jesus Christ, oh, yeah. did it? Yeah, yeah. January. And and, oh and, and yet. The two biggest fucking icons, Jason and Freddy, have been on the sideline while this '80s horror renaissance has come and pretty much run its course. It's just, it's, and and it, they have done nothing. It, but it's a money thing. Are like, they not? The do studios. They not want to well, remake? I don't know what the deal is with Freddy, but with Jason, there's been a bunch of lawsuits and all kinds of nonsense. I, like LeBron James was going to produce a, a fucking Friday movie at one point. Like it's, it's that yeah. would be. Dude, honestly, Space Jam with Jason. That would be just Space as Jason. good as Spiral, which was a pile of dog fuck. So I mean, not really though. Shut up, dude. Have you seen all these movies? I mean, the Saw series was pretty Duke. Oh my gosh, no, it wasn't. I would defend the Saw series tooth and nail, <laughs> in accordance to <laughs> Nightmare, dude. Listen, Nightmares. That's uh, that's. I'm gonna tell you that's this. a big crock of lies. We're gonna right there. <laughs> We're good. We're gonna keep going on this. I'll tell you right Why, now. Why, they got somewhere to be? Yeah, right. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> the first three nightmares, okay, fine. Th- those body any Saw movie. The first five Saw movies, there you go, baby. <laughs> oh, your headphones. I fell. lost headphones. <laughs> I heard such a big pile of lie. Oh, my God. Come on, dude. The second Saw movie is a fucking banger. Listen. When they're in the house and the needle pile and shit. It, sure. Like, it's crazy. This Listen. is what this is what I'm going to propose, and I propose this to to Luke, but I'm going to make it concrete. I'm sorry, I'm taken. In case it never <laughs> happens, but I want to do a series on this channel called, um, like the franchise, and we'll watch every single movie of the franchise, and then and then like and them. and you know what? I haven't been sleeping very well, so I think the Saw series would be a great one to start with. Damn, brother! Shots you just, fired. You're really trying to get into the Freddy zone. Aren't no, you? I'm trying to get you under get your sleep. get under your clawed glove. You're not gonna make me that upset because I think I you could, know because no. you really do like the Saw movies. I do. And I really do. Yeah, that is a good comparison though. Like how I love the Freddy saga, you you like Saw. Well, it's funny that you say that too because we mentioned that on our um on our Predator or our excuse our prey. me our prey review where like we understand why you and I are different but alike mm. because you like Predator for the fact that it is an action, action. horror mm-hmm. and I like Alien for the fact that it is a sci-fi horror because we're both horror sure, fans sure. but we like different branches of, of and both. that's that's the big thing that makes horror so special is there's so many different uh, avenues. Of to tell fear is our most primal emotion and there's a lot of things you can do with that i I think that yeah i mean i can't even argue with that i was gonna say i I would think something different but i think that you're right because you know everyone was that what you're gonna say well no but i was gonna say that there's the effects in this movie um uh, as far as fear playing is you got you know the last like main girl she turns into a cockroach because debbie you know her fear was bugs which i don't fear bugs but tasha yeah, that was gross. She don't like bugs, you know, yeah. so it's something mm-hmm. that, like, freaked her out. And I just, I thing I really like about the Freddy movies is, like, even if the effect isn't great, you know there was so much work put into it and effort. There was it, only it, one effect in this movie that wasn't good, dude. Everything, and what was that? Everything else was good. Um, what, Sheila? What, what, the green screen on Freddy? No, no, no. What were we well, talking about I don't about even know if that's though. green screen. I think that's like an in-camera trick. Oh, oh like, really? I, yeah. No, there was only one thing that I said I didn't like earlier, and I don't even remember what it was. But other than that, everything else was great. I, I mean... The actress's name for Sheila in real life is Toy Newkirk, by the way, <laughs> which I find very interesting. <laughs> Everyone in this movie's got a weird name. Yeah, for real. It was the 80s. I, I do think, though, that like 
as far as effect wise go, this movie is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the kills are always like very interesting and different. It's an, it's never seeing the same thing that we've already seen, and I yeah, always I mean, enjoy that. Well, everyone like fans of the series say like three and four are great two piecer double feature, and I would agree with that. Um, obviously, Kincaid and Joey and and Kristen get fucking iced immediately, and uh, Ken Ken Sejo's I believe his name is guy who plays Kincaid. Uh, he has some fantastic interview footage in this documentary, and he said uh, they, they let they let the black guy survive one, so they had to kill him right away in the next one. And uh, uh, I mean, that's yeah, that's that's very we that's we a laugh. common trope. But yeah, we with laugh. These things, but the, but the black guy always dies. Well, because he 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 said like I was telling my friends like if you're going to the movie, head straight to the theater. No popcorn, no bathroom, because if you miss it, I'm fucking dead. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it's I think like. Script wise, he's like ten pages in, and then he's he's done. Wow. And I really like that sequence of the junkyard. I think that I, matte yeah, painting when they go up, that's that's yeah, good. I was going to say the same thing, and I mentioned this while we were watching it, but it was really that scene's really loud. The when he's running down like the pathways, the headlights in the cars start turning green, like as it goes. So it's kind of like he's being stalked through the junkyard itself, and I thought that was a cool effect. Yeah. Not to mention, you know, the cars being slid out to make these like conjunction, yeah. you know, areas it's where like, he it, can't escape. It reminds escape. me of the E.T. ride at Universal where, like, the the fake car, like... Shh. I haven't been on that one, but there is a local haunted house, which people may know. It was rated one of the um, top in the nation in Pontiac. McKinney called, Manor. Called Erebus. McKinney Manor. You know the one where they... Oh, nope. my God. Where you they don't they know that one? You? Yeah. Oh, the, they torture you. Where you, you gotta yeah, sign yeah. The, the waiver and, and, they can and no one's wa- ever gone through it. Yeah, they can waterboard you and make you eat shit and stuff. It's like California. That's great. I want to go there. No, it's called Erebus, and there's a couple... Um, I don't think it's a very good haunted house, but the bottom floor is is a bunch of animatronics, and there's a there's a couple like vehicles that kind of rev mm. and like kind of bump you. It has like plastic bumpers on it, so you don't hurt. Uh, Blake's does not. Have they did it. no. Yeah, they, they, they did. had a car. There was a they, truck. There's a car. It never moved. It never moved. Oh my did. god! Get nope. caught in the minutia here. It just it just honks at you. So Blake's is a not only a national hard cider company, but they also is do it national. Yeah. I thought it was like Fago, where it's like just kind of here. No, no they're in like thirty everywhere. states now. So they're his goal. Whoa. Andrew Blake's goal is to get into all fifty, not to start going into that. But um, I, I really and liked- my address is. <laughs> Right, and my social security number is. Yes. I really liked the waterbed scene. I thought that was cool. That was your favorite one. Yeah, that's really? a good one. When, that? He, when she finds him, I think it's cool because he's like in the water. Sure, sure. That's yeah. a, I, I like. I was telling you guys there. There's a great like behind the scenes clip where Robert England's stunt double is all dressed up oh, like yeah. Freddy, and he's sitting on the side, and he's like, "We've been shooting this for six fucking hours. Do we not fucking have like?" He was just over, and like he's got all the Freddy makeup on, and he had to be underwater. Like that guy was probably fucking miserable. Oh, oh, man. I feel bad for that him. That makes really. me claustrophobic. Listen, if I have the Freddy mask on for more than like twenty minutes, I, I'm ready to pass away. So yeah, you're just done. I understand. I believe that. Uh, this was probably one of the most constructive conversations we've had in a few episodes. I mean, we're just kind of bouncing all over the joint. You could say it was masterful. Oh, boy. Here at Pick It and Flick It, we, re- we rate movies in two different ways. How do we do it? One of which is the classic 1 to 10. Wow. 1 being the worst, 10 being the best. What? I know. And what then, about what if I say like a 5? What does that mean? Well, you're about middle of the road, okay. which means it's not really that good, but it's maybe not that bad. On top of that, we like to do this little bit of an extra stretch, not only coordinating with our name, but also, it's a funny quote, pick being, we definitely recommend it, or flick. And Stick in the with wor- us here. <laughs> in the words of Natasha, we watched it so you don't have to. Like the nostalgia critic. That's right. So, ladies first, Tosh. I thought you were going to say me. That would have been a good. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> one, one out of ten. Um, I give it a Six? A six? I, I, I will also give it a, a big fat sixer. This is crazy to me because I gave it a six as well. Whoa! The triple six. six, six. The, the triple six coming across. I wish you could see my face right now because <laughs> I am disgusted at what just occurred between the two of these stunads here. On top of that, Luke, would you pick or flick, my friend? I, you bet your sweet bippy. You're going to pick it? Fuck yeah. Wait, what do you mean? I yeah, would pick, pick all it. these fucking stupid movies. You're going to pick it as well? Yeah. I'm going to shock people here. I'm going to shock them. It's a pick from me as well. Uh, These movies, they're the classics, man. Mm -hmm. You can't can't get around them. 
You Listen, just can't. They're not good. Don't I, get me wrong. I, I've been uh, telling everyone that the new season <laughs> of Stranger Things is the Elm Street reboot I never got. Oh, okay. And sure. we wouldn't have any of that nonsense without these silly yeah. 80s slashers. And that's the best part. I, I don't. I think I'm pretty hard pressed not to pick a movie that was like. It's an it's just like it's such an interesting time capsule of, of of culture and movies. Like like I was saying right when we start, Debbie's wearing a leather jacket with right. like booty shorts on. Like right. it's incredible. Just, it's something different. Excellent. I, don't get me wrong. This movie is not good. There's there's not a lot in this movie <laughs> that I'm like, wow, that blew my mind. This, however, is, aside from New Nightmare. And Freddy vs. Jason, which is kind of its own thing. But yeah, aside right. from New Nightmare, this is the last Elm Street movie that's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, no. I enjoyed watching this movie. There wasn't a part where I was like, okay, I'm done. And, and like, know? it's very quick. Like, death after death, which I also yeah. forgot. Yeah, what is there, eight total? I, I, six to eight, perhaps? Well, we figured out there was six, and mm-hmm. there was at least one more after that. I, I don't think, think so. No, no. No? Okay, so then there's six. Yeah, no, because by that point, it was just Alice and Dan, but they oh, both make true. it. Oh, true. Yeah, okay, so. Dan doesn't make it much further, but oh, big we'll get to that next time. Oh, next year, stay tuned for Dream Child. <laughs> 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 One year from now. Halloween uh, Extravaganza Part 4. Yes, we'll do it. 3.5. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Thank you We're so much. We're going to start in January next year. That way Luke can <laughs> that be, we can on, be every on every single, single episode. Jesus, I don't even know if I'd make it. That'd be funny. We I'd should pass do that. away. That, we should do that and Look, just stockpile. All right. As soon as we stop recording, we're going to start drafting the next year. Stay with Christ. Yeah, stay with it. Uh, thanks so much for listening. Luke is not familiar, but he will be. I have to do my little spiel at the end. If you've made it this far, which is not, we're almost. We're Dislike, over. unsubscribe, and go fuck yourself. <laughs> we are over a half hour. Uh, Tosh and I will be doing a couple more, and then hopefully Luke will be on the rest of it with us. But we've done a single movie for every single day in October. And if you've been watching, thank you so much. If you haven't, go back and listen because we're in the single digits now, right? Yeah. So we're ready to roll. Subscribe, comment. You don't have to like it. I don't give a shit about your likes, but at least you're watching. That's all. He doesn't give a shit about you. I don't do that either. So thanks so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.